This is a very active, healthy female who presented to my office in the elective outpatient setting with a spigalian hernia, as you can see there. So again, spigalian hernias, I treat them just like an inguinal. I treat it a little bit higher with my dissection plane. But again, I stay in the preperitoneal pocket. I was showing you earlier there across that spot is the arcuate line. So I try to go just above the arcuate line. And then I do my crossover. So I'll try to pull the preperitoneal pocket down where I'm sort of connecting the dots. And you see here, I'm just trying to get a good window here to get into the preperitoneal plane. And then I'm just connecting the dots here between the rectus lateral border of the rectus muscle, which you'll see in the medial boundary of the obliques. And you can see the wide bare area, the semilunaris. Again, not entering into the oblique fascia. Just creating my pocket now electively, trying to go all the way down as low as I can. I'm coming on top of the hernia defect now. The nerve distribution in the semilunaris, as you know, can be variant. So I try to stay directly on the hernia sac. I don't drift anywhere medial or lateral. And here I'm just taking this defect down, taking the peritoneal flap down. I'm just taking this down farther. Just trying to make sure I get good coverage. I did use a barred 3D Max mesh for this, again, mimicking and consistent with what I would do for an inguinal hernia. Still trying to work on this pocket, just kind of eyeballing it to make sure that my extra large 3D Max mesh is going to fit here. Then I always close the primary defects with spigalians. Only because the tendency here, it's not bound by anything other than the, the rectus and the oblique, so they tend to get larger even in the setting of mesh placement. So I'll just close a defect, as you can see. See the mesh fits perfect. So by galleons, I do circumferential fixation around there. So I'll do four quadrant fixation around the defect. That's the high medial fixation. And I'm just closing the flap. 
I always try to incorporate the defect and the contents into the closure, as you'll see. Basically reduce the hernia sac, pull it up, take a bite of it with the needle, and suture it back onto the flap.